it's another time for us to go on an adventure but this adventure is not fun let me tell you a story of horror a story of slavery a story of trials and tribulation and a story of pain join me this weekend on my youtube channel as we move along the seven stages of the slave route in Guida, in the country of Benin republic while I tell you the stories each stages tell, while I tell you the pain that our forefathers passed through in every of these stages, we can never truly know ourselves until we know our history. We can never truly know the battles that are called for us to be here today until we know our history. So, let me tell you a story. Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'll be taking you through the historic city of Wida. Wida was one of the largest slave trading posts in West Africa with an estimate of 1.5 million slaves being shipped from here through the 4 km slave route which stretches from the market square where slaves were once sold to the Atlantic Ocean. The slave trade was a cooperative effort between African rulers and private merchants. From the 1580s to the 1720s, about 1,000 slaves were exported from Wida monthly, many of whom were taken captive during the tribal wars. The slaves were marched in chains from the town's slave market to the nearby port where they would board ships to unknown destination, never to return. The route consists of six main stages. 1. Plaza Chacha, where enslaved people who arrived were auctioned. 2. The Tree of Oblivion This is the tree where men went round 9 times and women went round 7 times so that in accordance with the Voodoo tradition, they will forget their origin. 3. Is the Zomai House where slaves waited for the arrival of the so-called slave ships. 4. Is the Memorial of Zumboji which is the mass grave where dead slaves were thrown. 5. Is the Tree of Return which would allow the souls of slaves to return back to their land when they die in foreign countries. The sixth place is the place where the ships used to arrive, which today is symbolized by artistic work and called the door of no return. Meet Dudoni, my tour guide for today. On this day, I had earlier met him at the snake temple where he told me he was a tour guide, but I think he was just trying to get money from me. So I told him not to bother that I wouldn't be needing his service. So I just went to the point of no return, as I thought that was the only slave monument in Wida. While I was drinking coconut water at the door of no return, I was approached by Dudone again when he told me that there are other slave monuments in Wida aside from the door of no return and agreed to take me there for a fee. His number is going to be displayed on the screen and make sure you negotiate with him before you start your journey if you decide to go with him. The first place to visit is Place Chacha. The site where the slave market was held. Men and women were led under the large tree still in the center of the square that was planted in 1747 by a Daome king. Here, the auction took place and European and American buyers sought to buy slaves. Okay. So, before you come for this place, you have a pretty country for white people if you come for the market to carry the slave, to buy the slave. Behind the market square is a house called Palace of Don Francisco de Souza, the famous slave merchant, originally from Brazil and of humble origins. He came to Wida to seek his fortune with the slave trade and in a few years, he became the most important slave merchant of all Western Africa. He was popularly called Chacha, which originated from his saying Jaja, a Portuguese phrase which means something should be done right away. He always said this during slave trade, telling the merchants to hurry up about making their decisions. The first man, they start to buy the slave for this place. Don't before he buy the slave for that place, he they carry all the slaves, go for this house, you see for that place. After being bought, the slaves were branded in order to be able to recognize which buyer they belonged to and subsequently they were led to the oblivion tree. In this branding house, Alt iron was used to brand slaves with the initials of the slave traders at the back of the slaves. Portuguese slaves were branded with P, French slaves were branded with F, and English slaves were branded with A. This helps to avoid confusion after all the slaves have been loaded on the ships. This house, it is start to make to the market 
for the body for the slave before it they carry all the slave go for the point for no return. This tree is the column tree to change the slave for French Labre des Enchères for French. This tree was called the auction tree, that is, a tree where slaves were auctioned and sold to the highest bidder. Okay, change, okay, the tree of change. Okay. What do you want to call it in French? Lab des enchères. Lab des enchères. After this place, we are supposed to go to the second place, which is the tree of oblivion, but this tree does not exist anymore. It died a long time ago and now in its place there is a statue that remembers the place where the slaves were led to forget their origins and their history. The buyers made them believe that the tree had the power to erase their memory and remove their spirit. The dramatic ceremony consisted of turning clockwise around the tree nine times for men and seven times for women to forget their origins. Come from that place, some come from this place. Okay, so the These pots you see on the floor were made to represent the slaves. And the path they form shows the path through which they come into the market and the path through which they exit the market after they have been branded. Now let's go to the third place which is called Zomachi. Okay. Uh, this place, the name for this place it is a Zomachi. Zomachi. Zomachi, it is the place the light, you know, you know hope. The light, you know hope. And the light today every time. It's always light here. Yes, that's why they call it so much so for my language. So it is light. Monty, it is the place you know go to see you go to see light every time. Stand by, yes, stand by light. 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 Stand by, so it's light. It's light. That's French, have you? We are French. Yeah. On the walls of Zumachi, there are different drawings. And the first drawing on the external wall shows a map of Africa. This shows that all the white men's slaves were gotten from Africa. On the second part of the wall, we see the tree of oblivion, also known as the tree to forget, which was made by King Agaja. The third section of the wall art represents the slave market, where slaves are being traded by Felisa de Souza. The artwork shows someone trying to open the mouth of the slave to look at the teeth of the slave. The healthier the teeth of the slave looks, the stronger the slave is. Um, yes, yeah. This one represents the second tree. The second tree is the one I love the road the next art shows the tree of return this tree brings back the souls of slaves after they have died in foreign lands because africans believe that after our body dies, our souls live on. The next art shows the ship and the small boat. The ship can't come to the shore, so slaves are conveyed in multiples of seven using a small boat to the ship. But during the journey from the shore to the ship, some slaves fight inside the small boat and try to drown themselves because they prefer to die in their own land than die in a foreign land. There is also a representation of how the slaves are packed inside the big boat. They are always packed together like sardines. The men are kept in one segment and the women are kept in another segment while the children are allowed to roam about. The men are kept with their face laying down while the women are kept with their face facing up. They put the slave for the big boat like this. If they put down. Okay, they love. Okay, this is how the boat um, slaves are arranged inside yes, the boat. For the boat, like yes. a sardine. Yeah, you know, sardine. I pack them. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. Sardine. Yeah. Yeah. Something they chop sardine. Pack all of them inside the boat. Put the boat, the boat everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go. The next art shows chains that were used to bind the hands and legs of slaves together and they had to up just to move from the market place 
to the ship. But the chain binding the iron and leg together are removed before they get on the ship so they can be placed tightly together. Before he enter for the beach, the white people, they come out this one. They come out the, the chain. Okay. Before he they free. Okay, to, to like stay this. for the, the boat. Oh, boat. Okay. The next art shows the valueless things white men brought to Africa in exchange for slaves. Papo, this is something that have any value. No, it is this something like this in the given for the king to collect the slave. Yeah. The next art on the wall represents white slave merchants who usually come to Wida for slave trade. They come buy slave for Daome. Benin, the first name for Benin, it is a Daome. The next art represents the movement of the slaves through the slave route towards the black house and the artwork just behind this tour guide represents the abolition of slavery in Haiti which happened in the year 1791. Let's go to see Isai. Okay. Getting into the compound of Zomachi, you are going to see more works of art on the wall. This first one represents slaves that were fighting against being taken to the big ship to be taken abroad. The second art represents rebellious slaves who were being whipped for disobeying their masters. The third one represents a transaction between an African ruler and a slave merchant who are discussing transactions about a slave. The next one shows an old man who is not able to work but is being forced to work by the Europeans. The next one shows slaves and their children. Whenever the white men bought a slave that had a child, they are giving the child for free because when the slave they bought gets hold, the child is going to be able to grow to replace them. This next one shows the goods and properties of the white men being carried by slaves towards the boat. This next one shows slave merchants checking and molesting a black slave woman so they can take her to a room to rape her. This next one shows slaves fighting and rebelling against the slave masters. This next one shows slaves fighting on the small boat, preventing them from being taken into the big ships and being shipped to European countries. This next one shows slaves working abroad on railway lines. And the next one shows the black house where slaves are kept from days to even months before they are being shipped abroad. The next one shows slaves working on a sugarcane plantation. And this next one shows slaves who are too weak, diseased or dead being dumped into the sea by these white slave masters. In the compound, you would also see portrait sculptures of different great men who fought for the freedom of Africans against colonial and western oppression. These men include Toussaint Louverture, Aret Tubman, Phyllis Whitley, Dottie Bookman, W.E.B. Du Bois, Marcus Garvey, and Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. Quinon. Quinon. Okay, this one is Toussaint Louverture. I'll show you the second It is a 400 years history. The name for this tree is called a Bwakaima. 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 Okay, see the Bwakaima. The is a tree that has existed for over 400 years. And behind it is a building constructed by Honora Agesi. He constructed the building to serve as a theater place where stories of slavery will be told through music. But he was not able to complete this building before he passed away. The government of Benin Republic had taken over this building and in a few years time, maybe this dream of ease will actually come to actualization. He no finish him, no complete him before he... No, he no finish him. But now the, the man he died. The man died. He died. Nobody can continue. No, the government, they go to start to arrange. Okay. So he, he, he start to go for that place. The world. The world. After we were done here, we went to Zomai House, which is just behind this Zomachi. Zomai House is also known as Black House and it is a house where slaves were kept for up to 3 months before being shipped out to European countries. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to click on the like button and if you are coming to my channel for the first time, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Thank you returning subscribers for always coming back and don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Okay, so I don't understand. This place, this is the beginning of the black house. Black house but, like okay, but later when the evolution and everything, people started staying here. Yeah. So they had to push on the monument and everything forward. Oh, yes. yeah. During the slave trade, 
The black house used to stand in this place where we are currently, but since it has been destroyed, artistic works have been used to represent and tell stories of what happened here. The black house is a house where slaves are kept for up to three months before they are being transported by the ships. The house has no window, that is why it is called the black house. It is very very dark and slaves were packed into the place. Some fell sick and some died in this black house. The slaves is themselves in the same place they stood and also defecated in the same place they stood. Slaves that died or fell sick are taken to a mass grave dump site which we are going to be seeing later in this video. White people in the Cali and go for the cemetery for the slave. Don't be symmetry for the slave, it is for this place. Yes, now the slaves that were transported through the slave route were not just from Benin Republic and this artwork shows the different slaves and the countries which they are from. Now, these people, they represent the slave, they are from for Nigeria. Oh, this is Nigerian Nigeria slave. Nigeria slave, okay. the slave they are from for Badagri. This one, this Shukhaed, they represent the slave, they are from for Togo. This head with the up, 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 up. No, one, two, three. Oh, the, the, the three head. Head. Okay, I see, I see, yes, I see, I see. The three head, you represent the slave in the okay. front for Togo, for yes. an error. Okay, for Togo. For Togo. Okay. So, this one, this two head, you represent... Which two head? Yeah, this two head. Yeah. Okay, this two, yeah. Yes, head, okay. you represent the slave in the front for Niger. Niger. Niger, Agadez. Okay. Yes. Uh, for the phone now, you represent the Uploton. This was how the slaves were kept and made to sit in the black house. Shackles were kept in their mouths to prevent them from talking so they wouldn't make rebellious plans. They start to talk for the uh, uh, they go fee, they go fee, they go fee, fight, fight for the, tell, for the white. Tell people, tell people yeah, do this, do this, yeah. Yeah. Next, we'll be going to the fifth place, which is Zuboji. A place where slaves that die in the black house are thrown. It is a mass grave site and a lot of slaves were thrown there without any death ceremony. The cemetery, it is this place, he put all the slaves, he die, he tire, he no have power, all he die for this place. Down now, every Sunday, the government, the people, the government for this village, they do pray for the cemetery every Sunday. Every Sunday? Every Sunday, wow. pray do. Today it does not today. Wow. Let's go. Just beside this black house, there is a pond where the slaves had their last bath before being shipped out. But the tour guide did not show me that. If you ever go to experience this slave route journey, you can ask your tour guide to show you this place. Welcome to the fifth place of the slave route called Zuboji. During the period of slave trade, there was a big pit in this place and this is where slaves are dumped. Whenever prisoners become weak, too tired or diseased or dead from the black house and cannot make the trip down to the door of no return, they are usually thrown in the pit that was here. Some are usually thrown in here alive with other dead slaves. Today, a memorial stands in this place which used to be a pit where slaves were thrown. It is called the Memorial of Memory and sometimes also called the Wall of Lamentations because sometimes the enslaved were still alive after being dumped. From this Wall of Lamentations, three distinct colors can be seen. The red on the wall stands for the blood of the slaves. The black on the wall stands for the chains the slaves were usually bounded with. And the brown or maroon color on the wall represents the slave and looking at the wall you can see that there's a kind of artistic perception that is formed by the art showing that the slaves are moving on a route this represents the slave route every sunday prayers are being done in this place in remembrance of the slaves next we will be heading to the sixth place which is the tree of return those who survived the black house were led to the tree of return this tree has survived over centuries and is still visible on the street of the slave up to this day here a ceremony was held which ensured that the spirit of the slaves returned home after death. After the slaves were led from the black house, they were made to turn around this tree three times for both men and women in a clockwise direction. After the completion of this ritual, 
the slaves were taken to the beach where the monument of the door of no return can be found so let's go to the last stage of the slave route if you have been watching this video so far and you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel leave a like and don't forget to drop a comment in the comment section below welcome to the final stage which is the door of no return yeah slaves are loaded onto boats that will take them to the big ships the most combative or desperate slaves would prefer to commit suicide by throwing themselves out of the boat and drowning or trying to swallow their tongue in the act of suffocating themselves rather than going to the unknown. Because when slaves get to this place, they look at the sky and the sea and they see that there is nothing ahead of them. So rather than facing the unknown, they prefer to kill themselves. Some slaves even ate sand when they got to this beach in an attempt to kill themselves. The slaves who get to the ship were stored on the ship up to 500 per vessel. The men were slammed face down to make it more difficult to rebel while the women were slumped on their backs so it was easier to abuse them sexually. They remain in this position throughout the journey of about 3 months of sailing. Every 10th of January, a festival of Voodoo is being held at this beach to celebrate Voodoo. Remember, Voodoo is a religion just like Christianity and Islam because before the white men came to invade our land, there were things we worship and believe in that has been working for us. Any practice of Voodoo that you see anywhere around the world is because of our forefathers that were enslaved and taken out of Africa. These forefathers of ours are the ones that continue practicing voodoo in every country where they have been taken to and that is why voodoo has become popular around the world today. They carry the slave go for America. Before he enter America, many many uh, 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 slaves, they start to do the ritual for voodoo. Now so, see he enter for Brazil, Portugal, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Réunion, Haiti, you go see Vodou, Vodou for all this country. But the first is uh, Daomi, it is uh, Wida, Benin. The Vodou, it is Tatu, Moon. At the door of no return, you will see different artistic sculpture, each of which has a meaning. You see two masquerades, which represent a gungu, a deity which brings back the spirit of the enslaved after they die in foreign land. Just beside the door, you are going to see three big structures which represent adult humans and this represents the slaves from Nigeria. Then in front of it, you are going to see a smaller human structure and this represents the children of the slaves. Approximately 15 million slaves were estimated to have arrived in the Americas with additional casualties including those who perished before departure, the sick and wounded abandoned to die, rebels who were killed and individuals who took their own lives. Considering these factors, it is suggested that the western slave trade affected around 30 million individuals. Approximately 2 million departed right from the port of Wida, that was the second most important Nigerian port in West Africa after Luanda in Angola. While on this beach, I saw another historical monument and I told the tour guide to take me there. On getting there, he told me the story about the monument. This place was the place where the first two missionaries that came to Wida to preach Christianity passed through when coming into the country. Before the maps became defined and border existed, this particular point served as a border between Europe and Daome. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope you enjoyed every bit of the story along the way. Until we meet again on the next adventure, au revoir my friend, au revoir explorers.